interests of our favourite artist with me, Gemma Kearney. It's certainly going to be fascinating. Sunday afternoon from one. BBC Six Music. So here's, here's one for you. So um, I'm going to the show tomorrow night with my oldest friend, and he bought Diary of a Rock and Roll Star because he had a part-time job. He was 15, I was 13, maybe. And my dog ate it. And so years later, I bought him another copy, but that's the original copy that my dog ate. So I, I won't mind, if you don't mind, I've got three things for you to sign, if you don't mind. And yeah, not no, no worries. Thank you. So I believe Leamington was ace last night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's funny, really, because when that book came out, they put a picture of me on the very back, and I'd only just joined. I didn't expect to be on it, you right. know, really. But, so that was great. Really. Well, we'll talk about that in a bit, because it's yeah. uh, obviously I've got three different versions of it there. So there's a dog one. Yeah. There's a reissue of it, <laughs> yeah. which came out about 15 years ago, was it? Yeah. And then, of course, the updated one. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Love it. Right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so... Um, yeah, I'm off to see some mates playing at the Albert Hall tomorrow. He's on at seven, yeah. and then flip up the road to see you lot, so it's a busy night for me. You're going to make it? Yeah. What time are we on? No, um, I suppose. It's the Albert Hall in Manchester. Oh, I thought yeah, it's a proper oh, Albert no, Hall, no, not no, that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you had a Learjet or something. Yeah. Is he what, sorry? You had a helicopter or something. No, not yet. <laughs> I'm not turning it to no legends just Mark, yet. It's Mark, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah. That's Mr. Right. Riley. Yeah, I've spoken to you. You have? That, yeah, very enjoyable. I, I, I felt a uh, great connection. Yeah, no, cool. Yeah, well, it was really good. We'll talk about it because... I thought you were a lot younger, to be honest. So did I. The, the, <laughs> yeah, you know, the voice problem. came across sort of quite young. Childish. Yeah, very, very, <laughs> that's very good. childish. That's no, 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 no. You've no. got your little camera going. You don't mind, do you? Not at all, no. <laughs> Are we all over YouTube tonight? Well, I was going to say, uh, I was going to ask you about that because well, I saw the film. You did. Have you seen it? Yeah, well, I've retweeted it and all that. Yeah. This is fantastic. It's so little. That's wild, isn't quality. it? Yeah. How much was that? About 300 quid. Well, it's not bad, you know, for what it's bad for what it does. Mm. The quality of it is 4K incredible. Video. Yeah, the quality is bad. Yeah. Will it make me look good or. Well, yeah, you will appear to have had a shave. <laughs> <Sorry, laughs> if I hang around outside till 6 o'clock in the morning, is there any chance I'd meet Nana Man Manchetti? What's her name? Naga, Naga Manchetti. Who's that? She presents on on uh, BBC Breakfast oh, I don't Show. Know. Yeah. Listen, we're getting to it. Eleven seconds yeah. left on this. Yeah. I don't know if you want to pull your mics in a little bit. I mean, it's me telling you you've been doing one, it. One, 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 yeah, one, brilliant. One, 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 two, one. Hello, gentlemen. How you doing? <clears throat> Okay, so I'm Mark Riley still, I've not gone anywhere, and that was a golden age of rock and roll by Mott the Hoople, and I am beside myself, it actually happened, uh, we have got Mott the Hoople with us tonight, so we've got Ian Hunter, we've got Ariel Bender, if, if you the don't... great Ariel Bender, <laughs> Sorry, come on mate. Mark, that didn't take long did it, and, no. uh, and Morgan Fisher as well, all. all great obviously, <laughs> um, and so you played Leamington Spa last night, yeah yeah, yeah, Leamington Spa, so how was that, it was fun, yeah, it was it was a little bit strange uh, coming from the the American tour where the stages were really big and sort of it, it felt quite small, but it was felt very intimate. Yeah, it was okay, you know. Okay, it, it was uh, it was well, very. It's a warm up for uh, the rest of them were kind of bigger, you know. It's a warm up for this show. Yeah. In yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. A few more after that. Yeah. yeah, and a few more after that. We'll go through all the dates in a short while, of oh. course. Um, but um, do you know, uh, yeah, it was the, it was the twenty sixth of November, nineteen seventy three. I bought tickets with my mate Steve Anley um, for my first ever gig, and so by default, the first band that I ever saw was Queen, and the second yeah. band that I ever saw was Motley Hoople with this lineup. Yeah. 
Yeah, we were closing for them. You were closing for them. Um, but um, f to have you three in here for me is just such a thrill. It really is. Well, and well enough, yeah. Oh, thank you. And, uh, and at this point in time, we should say hello to Mick Rouse, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hello, yeah. Mick. Hello, hello Mick. Uh, absolutely. All the best, mate. Hello, bloke. How is he doing? He's about the same, I think. You know, he's, right. he's, he's, he's all right. He's in a great place. You know, he's in a beautiful place. Right. And, oh, uh, I, yeah. It's difficult, you know. It, you it, don't know with that. Yeah. I'd, I'd actually known Mick before I knew the guys. You know, so I was quite familiar with Mick, and uh, and about the phone box. Yeah, uh, Mick was in a band before the Mock Guys. I think I don't know whether Pete and Buff were in it, but uh, when he used to come to Eversham, um, I was playing, and Mick was playing, and somehow I don't know how it came about, but we arranged to meet at a certain place where there was a telephone box. Right. So. I'd have my guitar on a piece of string, maybe, and <laughs> Mick would uh, very kindly get his guitar out, and we'd we'd stand in this telephone box and sort of exchange riffs. Oh, that's a good one. I'll have a bit of that. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, and off he'd go. So why why a telephone box? If you don't mind me asking. Well, no amps. Because we we didn't have any amps, so uh, it was, it was it, 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 oh, good sound in there. Good, good sound. sound. You know, and we used to mark. Like, you know. We we used to we used to stand in in the telephone box with the guitars upright. Well, you'd have to, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, you know, it's a wonderful thing to have gone through that because I think I don't think anybody else probably ever went through that. I doubt it, yeah. No. I, I doubt it. Well, the queue yeah. outside waiting to get to make a phone call, they probably <laughs> No, it would have been a load of other bands waiting yeah. to get in there to change <laughs> riffs. Probably. The queue a mile long, get, get out of here. <laughs> well, yeah, Hank Marvin, <laughs> yeah. get yeah. out of here. We, yeah. still, we still bring a telephone box on stage for him. It's, it's like Doctor Who, you know. That sort of Is it the best place for him? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Doctor Who. <laughs> I tell you, I watched a documentary about you guys today, and I know a lot about you, but, you know, and it was a documentary, it's got Chris Needs in there, yeah, yeah. ran your fan club, and, you know, and Daryl Easley, and really good. But um, Chris Needs described you particularly, but you also, Morgan, as lunatics. Well, we were. <laughs> well, um, you mean yeah. were? I well, think the word is um, <laughs> politely eccentric. We're all the lunatics the word, now. Yeah. So can you tell me what, what you were going up to on that on that tour? Because, of, of course, when I got to see you, I always look at Mott the Hoople as a kind of a, a, a beast of two heads. And I always say the hairy ass builder, the first section of Mother the Hoople, yeah. and then the kind of glam years, yeah. forgive the phrase. But I came yeah, in. Yeah, I really hate that because I, I think that uh, I think Mot the Hoople were never glam; they were class, the class, class looking. Flashy. They were always that, of it course. Was, yeah, but if you look at if you look at Overend Watts, he was a bit glam. Yeah, well, he was the instigator. Oh, of Pete was the instigator of the old. He loved it. You could tell. Stan, go and get the. Yeah, I'm not going on unless I've got my. Uh, you used to get it from the garage. Spray. The silver. silver paint. Yeah. Not like from boots. <sighs> yeah. The garage. Stan got the garage or I'm not going on. It was like know. car paint that he used to spray oh, yeah. himself with. And it, and it was ruining his hair and he didn't care, you know. <laughs> and then he started getting into all this gladiator stuff. And, you know, people like. Uh, what's, his, what was his name for the dolls? Arthur. Arthur. David Yo Arthur. Arthur, Arthur Kane. Arthur. Yeah, he was oh, P, you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> did everything about you know oh, Pete, and glitter too, Gary Glitter. Whatever Pete was doing, they were doing. And Pete then kiss, loved it. kiss as well. Yeah, but yeah, one kiss. night kiss picks up uh, on it. there yeah. was one night, Mark, which um, uh, we were to go on stage, and Pete had run out of paint for to paint the cross on his chest. Yeah, right. So he said, I, "I ain't going on stage. No, not without the silver cross, which he sprayed on." And so Stan went, uh, I think it was in America somewhere, Stan went down the road and, and bought a can of uh, cellulose paint, right. spray paint. Oh, brilliant, you know. Yeah. I don't think you can get it off for three months. He used to sit and look at it in the dressing room like, you, you're out of your mind. But and he was, because he was so serious about it, you know. Right. And you he got the best, I mean, Ralph was kind of like, oh, I'm not too keen on all this, you know. Mick would hang back, he wasn't really keen on the flash thing, you know. But I thought it was great because I was a Such fan, Screaming Lord Such. Who I isn't? Such. Yeah. Great show, you know. Amazing. When all Adam Faith and all them guys were like uh, in the charts, they weren't really solid out of gigs. Such, mm. yeah. Tommy Bruce, yeah. all these guys, Neil Christian. Yeah, Jimmy Crusaders, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were solid out of gigs every night of the week, you know. Little, little story, Mark. 
very quick. Uh, I was born in Eversham in Worcester, and every Friday they'd have uh, at the public hall, uh, because I was up and coming, uh, everybody that played there on a Friday to me were big stars. Ian Hunter played one night with Freddie Fingers Lee, and all these years later, I'm playing with him. Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> Fred was good. He was like Jolly Lewis. Brilliant. Didn't... I was his record plugger for a short while. Yeah. Yeah, in the early 90s, yeah. He, he was, was playing the bass. I'd have been for Jerry Lee, you know. Fred would have been huge, but Fred was just the double of Jerry Lee Lewis. So. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's strange, isn't it, because you just mentioned that about the bands before and stuff, but, I mean, you, you'd you only just started singing, actually, when you joined, uh, well, Mock the Hoople Forum, didn't you? You hadn't been singing well, yeah, that Fred much. Fred said, you know, you can write songs, but don't ever sing whatever you do, you know. Because Fred was a real good singer in that kind of Jerry Lee Lewis way, you know. Right, yeah. Oh, I, like I say, I, I worked one of his records. But uh, what does this date mean to you, if I can find it here? Oh, I've got loads of notes, which you'll never get out of here tonight. Uh, the 6th of August, 1969, what does that mean to you? What, to me? <laughs> Not to you, actually. Okay. Oh, to you, my, inst yeah. my instinct was to say something that uh, I, you can't say on the radio. No, don't say it. Mich <laughs> Michelle would get the sack. I wouldn't. Michelle would. <laughs> Um, it was the very first gig for Motley Hoople in Italy. Oh, okay. Okay, so 1969. Have you got Have you got any memories of Mal that? Malama Marit Maritima, yeah. uh, the Bat Caverna. Bat Caverna, that's it. Stan had been the Sinatra of beat. Stan Tippett, we keep on mentioning Stan. Stan was the tour manager for Motley all the way, and Sade and a lot of other people. Um, but Stan was then the singer, and he became the Sinatra of beat in, uh, in Italy. And they were expecting him back, and they got me instead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And so the first night went all right because they thought I was blind. <laughs> <laughs> second night... I, mean, I just stand there because you always wear shades, completely yeah, yeah. always, don't you? Okay. But the second night they found out I actually could see and that, that apparently was not good at all. <laughs> <laughs> so it was half money or go home. So we rang Chris Blackwell. He said, stay there, get the practice in, you know. Right. So we stayed there and it was miserable. We walked the gauntlet every night, you know. You had to go down these steps to get into the place. Right. The audience would be either side of you, total silence. <laughs> and the only thing that saved us was Doug. Doug was a Mick Jagger double who was headlining, and he was great. And uh, Doug, was, Doug liked what we were doing. I mean, it was pretty shambolic, but we were doing something slightly different, you know. Right, OK. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I, I was looking through um, one particular website today which had every single Mott the Hoople gig on it, mm. and it was terrifying. The amount of gigs that you did before you guys joined and yeah. when you jo guys yeah. joined as well, yeah. it's just, you don't want to look at it, it will scare you. Well, I mean, it beats the hell out of factory. Oh. Yeah, okay. But uh, so, I mean, you, you obviously like life on the road because you're still doing it. Yeah, I mean, I do. I like the camaraderie. It's great fun, especially when these guys were around, you know. It's yeah, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing to it be It wasn't just back. in the very early days, though, because when Queen started supporting us in 73, I looked at that list as well. It's amazing. And it's got 20 gigs in, like, 22 days yeah. or something. And you knew the Queen. You, you, know. yeah. you knew the Queen guys before anyway from I knew Smile. Them before they were Queen, yeah, when they were Smile. Yeah. yeah. And then we did twenty in England and twenty in New in America. The same pace, you know. You can yeah. do that when you're in your twenties. You well, do you know, I was been mentioning and I've just shown you we've got three different generations of um Diary of a Rock and Roll star, which is just everybody does who's in, ever been in a band just like looks at this and regards it as a Bible. They really do. Yeah, I'm waiting for my free one. <laughs> I haven't got yet. I'll sort you on out. Oh, okay. Luther, we can sort this out, no, <laughs> no bother. Worries. Um but um it is regarded. It's a little bit like you know, spinal tap where people everybody in bands yeah. gets it yeah. and they always yeah. say I either yeah. laughed or I cried. Yeah, yeah. And this is kinda of like the, the the written Bible, not because it's, it's real. Yeah. You know, it's to was, the bone. Was it written as a diary and then you just thought, actually this is quite good, somebody might release it? Or did you sit down and think I'm gonna I'm gonna write this and put it out? I just married Trudy. Yeah. And so was this my social my social life on the road <laughs> was was considerably diminished. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I found that if I if I wrote down what we were doing all the time, you know, um, it was I have no memory, so it was great. For, I, we can look back on this and I'll see what I was doing. Yeah. We got back to London and Charlie Gillett, uh, who was a DJ at that time, you remember Charlie yeah, Gillett? Yeah, of course, yeah. Well, Charlie had a deal with Pantham and he was two books behind. Right. And I said, well, you want to have a look at this, you know? And so Charlie had a look at it and Pantham took it and it saved Charlie's bum, you know, because yeah. he now was only one behind. And uh, the rest is kind of like... Uh, 
how it's been ever since. But the, the great thing is, and you just mentioned it then, you just got married to Trudy, but the, the real thing is that you are, it's such, a, it's such a sweet book as well, because you are, you're out on the road, and if you read Motley Crue's book, it's like... It's slightly different, yeah. It's, it's just different, isn't it, completely. And it's great, because Trudy's in it all the way through, and the guys are out there, and always seem to be going to uh, pawn shops, I mean pawn yeah. brokers, to buy guitars, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and the only kind of like really kind of a, a dark side of it really is kind of like taking mandrax and things to make you to go to sleep and well, to wake the, you up. The, and the thing was cocaine was the flavour of the month and cocaine speeds you up, it's like a car, you know, and I mm. could never understand why people want to speed their engines up because they won't last as long. Right. By that same psychology, I thought if you do mandrax, that slows your energy down so you'll last that much longer and I'm 80 next month so I'm proving a point. I was just going to say that, <laughs> so the thing... 3rd of June, you are 80, and I, you and know... Rush, you know, is, is take, I full credit to Rush. Yeah, no, <laughs> but it is, it, is quite, it is quite remarkable. I mean, people always say, oh, you know, whatever age you say, they don't say it to me, but you don't look it. But strike a light, I mean, to say that, you, you know, you are 80 in, like, on, on the 3rd of June yeah, and still right. doing the, the <coughs> world tour is just remarkable. I'm not putting this out as an advert for Mandrax. But you, well, know, you can't get them anywhere. We, right? we, no, we have a competition every night. Who's going to collapse first? <laughs> and I'm, I'm 73 to be. Mm. And this guy is absolutely amazing. I'm very proud to be able to say that I play with somebody at that age. And well, the guy yeah. still delivers. It is, it's, it's amazing. Just, it's remarkable. And yeah. I'll tell you what is, else is great. You just talked about the camaraderie. So, uh, Morgan, you've got that tiny little camera. So I, I follow Mother Hoople and you and you on Twitter. Are you on Twitter? I don't know. I, I don't. I'm old school. I right, don't. Okay. Do I, I couldn't like find anything. I'm anyway. the nerd of the group, you know. Right. Okay. Oh, I'm not on it either. I, I know there is a Twitter thing, yeah. but I'm not on it. It's not you personally, I know, no, but no. somebody's running it no. for you. Um, but um, you put you put up there the, the the film that you took of the first night of the tour, and yeah. you're just having a blast, aren't you? So the, the American tour was that it's good, a, was it? Oh, it's fantastic. Well, as Ian said earlier today to us, he said, you know, for the American people, it really is 45 years yeah. since they've seen them, except the few that were mad enough to fly to the other reunions. But yeah, so it's a bit different here because quite a lot of people saw the band in 2009 and 2013, so it's not totally new. Right? Yeah. But in America, people were like, flabbergasted they were just going bananas it, it shook us too yeah. the amount of people that, that, that well uh, come, i mean you know that kind of thing mark yeah. i mean morgan and i were the last in the bloodline of motley Upal, if you like true uh yeah. you know there's only the two of us left after everybody yeah. else had come back to do what they did and uh it it, it works it's as though it was half an hour ago, it was though it was a few months ago. Yeah, one of the things I asked us started there when we were doing it um, was, was how, did, how did we feel after 45 years of not doing it? And it's a weird question. Yeah. Because it didn't feel, it just felt like the following week. It didn't yeah. feel like 40, it, yeah. like, we just go on with it. Same as we always did. Yeah, you know? it's like like riding a bike. Guilty. You never forget, and it's back in the saddle, and off we go. I yeah. felt real guilty not not expressing amazement at like we get together and we play the first chord and lightning strikes and all that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it was just we just did what we always did, you know. Well, hopefully slightly better, you know. Well, as you can understand, I mean, from my point personally, because it was such a landmark day for me, you know. I mean, I've had a life in music. I've been dead lucky, you know. But that first show. I was thrilled, and I remember me and Steve Hanley, we went out and bought suits, right? They were, they were very cheap, we'd never been to a gig, they were like wire wool, and they were really itchy, and we thought, we, we look, we're, we're ready to go in. Yeah. And we got to the Mott yeah. the Hoople gig, and they were all grandad vests, yeah, yeah. arses hanging out the pants, flares, yeah. you know, yeah. Jesus yeah. boots. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we were so out of place, and right at the top, but it was yeah. just a, it was a life-changing event, you know, yeah. and so, and I remember watching, ah, just like I say, I loved Queen, and I didn't know whether it was because I'd never seen anybody before, uh, but also, when you came on, it just blew my mind. And then, of course, it was the fight that you two used to have on stage. Well, well yeah, he's, yeah, he's annoying. He's still annoying. There's a story. <laughs> there's, there's a story behind that. I mean, it's sort of. I think it's really happened on the '74 tour in the States, where sort of maybe Ian was getting a little bit miffed with me doing what I do, and he started dragging me across the stage, and I'd end up on the floor. And, and, and uh, people used to say to me, does Ian like you? Do you like him? And I said, well, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> but uh, we sort of continued that. And, uh, it, it, we were playing big places. We were playing like um, 
Well, there's a big place, really big places, and there would be locker rooms. <laughs> for, <laughs> right, we, and then the dressing room would be a locker room. Right. right? And me and him would sit there getting shines, kicking these lockers. Yeah, yeah. Like, because the press were outside. So. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's kicking off in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Amazing, that, yeah. yeah. But it still happens. He still wants to go in the middle, and that's not allowed. <laughs> well, it, it's, uh, you know, to come back, I think uh, it, it's what people want to see anyway. You know, I can't go on there like a cardboard cutout. It's they just, blew me off. It's just a bit of fun, you know. It is. You yeah. can't be Ariel Bender and be just all shy no, and retiring no, no, at the no, back. No, it's not actually Ariel Bender, it's Mark, the great Ariel Bender. The great Mark, Ariel Bender. Mark, listen. Yeah. The great Ariel Bender, please. How many times do we have to explain? He's got that on his passport. Right? I'm an idiot. It is, yeah. I'm not going to uh, say it. I just can't. I'm I mean, it's a joke. And me too, I can't sit down for the whole two hours. I mean, please. Oh no, he's The, the uh, noise we're making, you know, I have to get up and run around a bit. And little trundle over. You've got a rock and roll. Chuck a bit of champagne around sometimes. Yeah. Everyone who comes to see us, bring an umbrella. <laughs> you may get <laughs> a champagne <Mac>. shower. <laughs> so, and I, I brought in some very old um, music papers before. Did, did you bother having a look? I mean, it's kind of with yeah. Mother Hoople's. But did, did, you, did you have a look at them? Yeah, guys? most annoying. <laughs> he's a great. <laughs> who wants to look at them? 50 year old papers where you were young and gorgeous and healthy and all yeah. that. Is that me, young and gorgeous? No, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm, so, I'm so, so happy now. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a poster of you in the middle there, so you're a pinup boy. That's lovely, Mark. That's I'm fantastic. amazed. That I don't is. have that stuff. That's great you had that. Well, if you want it, you can have it. I, I promise really? you. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I, was, I, was, I asked Trudy, I said, has he given us them or has he just. Uh, I, had, I hadn't, but I have now. You've so got that three means copies. our love affair is over. You're well, giving us, you're, you're getting rid of them. Yeah, you don't, I mean, the thing is, you don't have to come back to them anymore. You know, you've got the papers now. And I tell you what, actually, uh, Rob Hughes is going to bring in a couple more papers of mine uh, that, that have got some great mock stuff in there as well. So. Well, I, we I tell you what, I was happy know. quickly just to see one of those old papers. I, I saw in... the, the poll for the greatest musicians and Mick Ronson was in the top ten guitarist. Number nine. Oh. Yeah, he was brilliant. I, I think, I, I, think brilliant. I was about 3,009. Yeah. Despite being Sorry, great. Yeah, uh, well, exactly, <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Yeah, he was a great player. Oh, amazing, great, great amazing. Oh, 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 hey, hold on, no, don't go over, don't say, go over say. board now. <laughs> you know, he was an arranger above everything. Oh, he's a genius. Yeah. I mean, I, I met I met you and I met Mick in 1975 yeah. at the bottom of the escalators. I've been the lucky to play these people, really. Yeah. Arthur um, and, and Rono and, and this one. And, uh, well, everybody guitars, brings guitars something different to the table. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, you can't all... You, can't all be the same. I think with the Bender, it was it was the live show because I th we were a low ebb when we got him in. Mm. You know, Mick had gone, and uh, Mick was the other half of the writing team. Yeah, and uh, immediately he walked through the door with the morale because we'd been through the mill already. I mean, you you said yourself the amount of work we were doing. Yeah, and then you had to make records and you had to have singles. Um, when he came in, he he just elevated the whole thing. I didn't I didn't even really realise what he was doing until after he left. Right. And the whole thing, despite Rono, you know, the whole thing went flat. Because That's it, why they call me the fairy dust kid. I thought you were called great. <laughs> Make your mind up. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, you, have, oh, yeah. you, have got, you have got that energy, haven't you, Luther? Yeah, you know, uh, that's it, a... it, it's, uh, it's something that, that must come natural to mm. anybody. You know, I go up there and as soon as I put my foot on the stage, I turn myself on. You know, I... I Sometimes you go on and do what you do, and you come off, and you go. How do we? How do we get through that? Right. You know, especially when you're travelling and and sort of whatever. But uh, uh, my energy level is exactly the same as what it was back then. Mm. He's, he, he's he's still he's still uh, cautious. Get out of here, get out a bit of cautious. Here. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a I cattle prod with him on stage if you're not careful. Well, you know. not necessarily. It's just irritating, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you mentioned a Mick, obviously, there. And uh, and so I did have tickets to watch Mott the Hoople playing at the Palace Theatre um, on that tour that never happened. Uh, oh, you know, so, yeah. the tour, so you did some dates in Europe, didn't you, after Luther... Yeah, yeah, well, it, it wasn't happening, no. Right, OK. Like I say, he went, and then the morale seemed to disappear. And Mick came in, and Mick was all business. He was going to show Dave. And uh, the problem, as I saw it, was... He wanted to rehearse immediately, Mick. Right. He was living in a flat behind the Albert Hall, and I said, well, where are we going to rehearse? And he said, here, like tomorrow. Right. 
And I rang round, and I won't mention any names, but one was decorating his living room, <laughs> uh, you know. And now I've got to tell this to Mick, and I look at Mick's face because I mean, Mick came from a situation where they were going mercurial, right? And you don't decorate your room, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, yeah. The band comes before everything. Yeah. And of course, we've been around the mill for years. People had just got married; they weren't taught to decorate the room. But he, he realised right then, and I did too. And that was the end of that. Right. And then obviously, you, I mean, you did the tour with Mick and then and, and a great relationship with Mick and, and all that. But yeah. I, I can't thank you enough for coming in. It's like I say, it's a night off and you've come in here. So I am so grateful. Oh, but um, just to say what's going on. So tomorrow night, yes, you are playing at Manchester Academy. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the following night, you're playing in Glasgow Barrowland uh, on the 21st, Birmingham Symphony Hall. The 23rd, you play Gateshead Sage. On the 26th, you play the, uh, well, the 26th and the 27th, you're playing the O2 Shepherds Bush Empire. Right. Yeah, yeah. I just cannot wait. So, um, yeah, yeah, you're great. You're all great, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <Hey>, Luther. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, yeah, and thanks so much for coming in. I'm going to play Thank now you. one of my favourite um, mock tunes, yeah. which is Marionette, which oh. is just one of one of the great tunes yeah. of all time. So, uh, yeah, thank you so never much. Thank get, you. Never could get the end of playing that, could we? Oh, you're doing it on this tour. I love it. I love it now. Do you know say that? Oh. <laughs> I, I love playing that now. Right. Funnily enough, you know, and probably it's probably the most complicated song that we do. Yeah. Now, once you get the once you get it, it's kind of mathematical. Once you get yeah. it, you're all right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, we'll see tomorrow. It's the simple yeah. things I find difficult, <laughs> <laughs> like me. Really. Um, okay. So, uh, well, Motley Hoople, uh, enjoy the tour, and again, Thank you. thanks so much for coming. A pleasure. In. Thanks, Mark. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks Cheers. so much. Thank you. Bye. Brilliant. Just great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I know yeah. the difference between real people and posers. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about that for a while. It can, would, would you, all three of you just mind putting yeah. all of your monikers on them? But cool. like yeah. I say, that's Steve's book from 74 when it came out. So if you could all sign Steve? them. But, yeah, Steve Hanley. Was in the, do you know the band The Fall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve yeah, was in the yeah. fall for 19 years, yeah, bless him. He, yeah. you know. Well, well, I'll put Steve in on this one. Yeah, please, yeah. That's a tough job. So you're keeping those away from the dog, then? Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to buy him another one, you know. But I found, I found it in the loft the other day. It just made me laugh, so... Well, I like that. That's brilliant. Man. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, well, I'll do one for you, and then I'll give him one. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Thanks, mate. Mark. Thank you. This is you, Mark? Uh, that, yeah, that's for me, please, oh, mate. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, fellas. You're right. Yeah, Rob. good. I'm Rob. You Hello, know, Rob. You're from Cook. Do you remember? You... Oh, bloody hell. Good morning, by yeah, Skype. Yeah, definitely. Uh... Oh, yeah. yeah. So I, I promise you a copy. Oh, thank yeah, that's you. That's for Tracy, yeah, please. T-R-A-C-I. Oh, yeah. lovely. Thank you. Would you mind signing No. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Morgan, could you... I'll do the honours. Well, 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 is it to anybody in particular? No, just me, Rob. Oh, all right, Rob. The hardest thing to do in marionette, believe it or not, is that laugh. Oh, right, you yeah. Know, yeah, the manic laugh. Ago, it was quite easy, but you find it quite difficult. You doing that, yeah. Thanks, bro. It's because you're miserable now, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Can you tell? Yeah. On the inside. There you go. I'm going to have to wait for Pete's arm. That's the right man. That, Mark, yeah, is not like easy that. to do today. And it sounds so small on stage because the effects from, yeah. from the board, yeah. we're, not, we're not hearing it. All we're hearing is, yeah. is yeah. him chuckling yeah. away. Yeah. As crazy as it was. Because you know we use quad. Just for that one bit. You know what I mean? We played stereo at the Euros Theatre in New York, the whole yeah, set. So but just for that laugh, we had quad. Yeah, oh, right. And it was hidden. Thank Cheers, you. thank you. Right, it was hidden at the back of the room. And you'd see people's faces, because all of a sudden this came from the back. Oh, right, yeah. It was looking behind them. What the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Are you oh. still on? Yeah, I'm on till nine, yeah. Good one, mate. Just Thanks, brilliant. Mark. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 Cheers. Thank I you. Wait. I can't wait for tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Don't, see you tomorrow. Don't, right. don't you yeah. dare say aerial banders are a lot shorter than what I. No, thought. I wouldn't dare, mate. We we used to do these gigs with the high heels on, and people said we used to come off and say, "Thought you were a lot taller than that." <laughs>
Come See ya, Mark. Come back after. Are you sure, you mate? Oh, yeah. I don't like no. bugging people on the work no, no, really. No, no, no. You're the exception to the rule. Well, well, I'll tell you what, thank you. Uh, Steve will be with me if that's all right yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Thanks a lot. Bless Mark. you. It was brilliant. Cheers, thank you. So great. Oh, yeah. Take care. And you. All the best.